Hey, welcome back. Uh, we are starting the book of Numbers. I would like you to take notes um, every day that we have a lesson. Um, there is, uh, we are not together, and so I cannot give you a discussion grade, which is a large portion of your grade, uh, simply by sitting in class and listening, or or asking questions, or or answering questions that I might ask you. So, in order to have a grade, I must have something for you from each of these chapters. So um, you do not have to write down everything, but you are writing down important things, things that strike you, things that I emphasize. Uh, certainly if I stop and I make some comments, you should write something down. Uh, I'm sorry, but if I think it's probably worth something, you need to at least give me that credit to, to say it's possibly important to you um, as well and I'll try not to waste your time. Um, so we're going to sometimes do more than one of these videos in a day, uh, depending on the, the length of the chapter. If you have a very large chapter, we'll only do one. If you have uh, two short ones, we'll try to do two. And then instead of stopping in the middle of a chapter, uh, we'll just continue. Now, we normally had 45 minutes uh, to do a Bible class. I seriously doubt that... Um, even a long chapter is going to take uh, even half that time. So it may be um, that in your your notes, the taking of your notes, if you want to stop the video and take some notes and then restart, um, that would be any additional time. So um, videos can actually be pretty efficient uh, uses uses of our time to where we're not not always wasting as much. So um, I really don't think this, the discussion of God's word and and the application of God's Word to our, ourselves and seeing Christ as we can. That's not wasting time, but um, this is a little bit more efficient, I think, and it will not take as long. I think you'll see that all of your classes, you may get finished earlier um, in this type of uh, online uh, format than when we were together. Um, I think it's a lot more fun together, and I can't wait to see you again. I'm, I miss you. Um, and I prayed for you each this morning and just asked that, uh, that you would uh, pay close attention as we uh, are still studying God's Word. God can use this in my life and use it in your life, and I pray that He does. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we're reading uh, chapter 1 today, and I'm going to abridge quite a lot. You're going to see that there's, uh, first of all, some Hebrew names, large sections of Hebrew names. Um, since there's census, first of all, why do you call it the book of Numbers? Um, when the Greeks uh, translated the Hebrew Bible, they titled this Numbers. Uh, the Greek word is arithmoi, uh, which comes from arithmetic, so numbers. Um, they called it Numbers because there's a census at the beginning of the book. Uh, first four chapters, it's talking about the census. You're also going to have a, a census in chapter 26. Uh, in chapter 26, right at the end of the book, and so um, the writers, uh, the translators of the of the Septuagint, the Greek, the Greek version of the Old Testament uh, Hebrew Bible, uh, called it Arithmoi or, or Numbers. The um, the Hebrews uh, called it In the Desert. That's the name of this book, uh, and we see that In the Desert, uh, in some ways, is a is a beautiful depiction because you're going to see that this book is really about bumbling. Um, Israel had everything. Right from the beginning, they had, a, they had a government, they had a law, they had worship, they had everything at the beginning. They didn't have to evolve into a country. They were established as a country. God called them out, delivered them, and then showed himself to them. And they, the book of Numbers really is about what does it look like when you disobey what are the effects of disobedience, and what are the long-term effects of disobedience? So this is a very pertinent book uh, to me, to you, um, as we live in this world and as we um, battle with disobedience in our own lives. What does it mean um, to us? And re remembering, too, that we have the gospel, that Jesus lived in our place, and that we are accepted. We are not cursed as the Hebrews were when they disobey. But there is something uh, that will continuously cause us to repent and turn back to God uh, because of what he's done for us, that, that the gospel affects us 
uh, in such a strong way. So let's look at this and, and um, there will be times that I, I will abridge. And um, you can always stop this video and um, take notes um, st and then restart so that um, you're never behind. Okay, So let's begin in the book of Numbers chapter 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tabernacle of the congregation on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every man a pole, from twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go out forth to war in Israel. Thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies." So you've got 20 years old and upward males. These are the ones who can be soldiers. Um, and I do not assume that the, that the very old men are counted. There must be an upper age limit. I don't know. Old, old, old. Like, um, I don't know, like my age or something really old. Decrepit. Okay, but, uh, but fighting age would be num numbered within this. So it starts there in verse 5. And these are the men that shall stand with you. And you're going to see that these are the generals or the governors or the, the top banana of each of the tribe. And you have the tribe's name. This was these, these people um, were the 12 sons of, uh, of Jacob. Um, they're long dead, but they are still the namesake of these tribes. And there, there is a older person or... or um, um, a strong man, I guess, whatever, a, a, a politician at the head of this family, and these are the ones that are named. And so you're going to see all of these Hebrew names of all the, tri the 12 tribes. Uh, remember that Joseph, even though that Joseph was a, a son of Jacob, he is not numbered along with the 12 tribes. So when you count to 12, there are 12 tribes. Joseph is not one of them, okay? But he had 12 sons. That means that Joseph had two sons. Ephraim counts in Joseph's place. Manasseh also is counted as a as son of, of Israel. That leaves 13 tribes. So not 12, but the 12 tribes of Israel do not count the Levites. The Levites were not in the army. The Levites inherited no land. The Levites are specifically, exclusively worship leaders. And they take care of the tabernacle. They take care of the sacrifices. They represent the people before God, and they guard the people from God's holiness. So we'll see that that sanctification makes them completely separate uh, in in all of uh, of Israel society. They are different, distinct. Okay, so you can see this up to 13, 14. These are all the heads of those tribes. Okay. And Moses and Aaron took these men who were expressed by their names, and they assembled all the congregation to together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by houses of their fathers, according to the numbers that are named from 20 years old and upward by their poles. So they said, this is my father, this is my grandfather, this is my great-grandfather, these are the people, we are from the tribe of Asher, and this is who we are. And then they counted all of those people that could fight. And the Lord commanded Moses, and he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. So that's the beginning of that census, that first census. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, by the generations after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of names by their poles, every male from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those who were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Reuben, were 40 and 6,500. Okay, so these two verses you're going to see repeated over and over again. It's like a formula. Um, in fact, it's almost like a script. You have this one for this tribe and this tribe and this tribe. And at the very end, first of all, it tells you which tribe we're talking about. And then it tells you who is eligible to be counted. And then it gives you the name or the number of those that are counted. So in the case of Reuben, Reuben was the firstborn. Well, wasn't given firstborn's um, blessing or, or status. Uh, that was given to Judah, which was actually a fourthborn. Uh, Reuben messed up. Levi was the third, is now the priest. Simeon messed up and basically were disinherited or at least demoted greatly, uh, not given first, first son status. And uh, 
And Judah was. Judah becomes where the king is. King David is from Judah. Christ is from Judah. Okay. So we have this Reuben was 46,500. Then we have Simeon. So in uh, verse 23, uh, 59,300. Then Gad. So you're seeing that uh, you're going to have them in birth order. So you have the, um, you have Leah's children, you have Rachel's children, you have um, Bill ha Bill Ha, and all all of the, you know you had you had two maids, so essentially Jacob had four wives uh, with children from from all of these women. Dysfunctional, okay. Please don't do that. And they were numbered of Gad was forty five thousand six hundred fifty. Then we have Judah. This is the fourth born. Three score fourteen thousand six hundred. So three score is sixty. 74,600, so a lot. This is a large tribe. You're going to see that Judah gets quite a lot of land. Judah and Benjamin will be in the south. Um, all the other ten tribes will be in the north. Eventually, after Solomon's day, um, Judah and Benjamin are called Judah, and the other ten tribes are called Israel. Um, totally different countries, different worship, everything was different. Uh, God was still faithful to them, even though they were completely disobedient. So we're now in Issachar. Issachar was 54,400. Then Zebulun. Zebulun was 57,400. And then remember, Joseph is not named. So we have first Ephraim was 45,000. And then the next one was Manasseh. That was the other son of Joseph, was 32,200. Okay. Benjamin, the last born, the smallest. Um, uh, was a small tribe as well, um, was 35,400. Okay, half, the, half the, the size of Judah. Children of Dan by their generations uh, were three score 2,700. Okay, wow, 62,000, that's a lot. And then Asher, so they're named according to the two wives, and then the, lo the lower, lesser sons were the uh, handmaid's sons. Sorry, that's how it worked. Okay, 40,500. Naphtali uh, were 53,400. And these are those that were numbered, which Moses and Aaron numbered, the princes of Israel being 12 men. Each one was for the house of his fathers. So all those that were numbered the children of Israel by the house of their fathers from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go in war, even that those who were numbered were 600,000, 3,550. So we're talking about a more than a half a million men army. That is enormous even for today's standard. We're talking about the world now has enormous countries. The United States is a huge country. China has a huge country. And this is a six, a, a half a million man army. That's a lot. Um, these were older, younger, but these were all able to hold a sword, all able to fight, and um, did. You'll see later when we get to Joshua. The Levites were not numbered. The Lord had spoken to Moses saying, you should not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them from among the children of Israel. You shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle testimony and over the vessels thereof and over the those that, things that belong to it. And they shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle sets forth, the Levi should take it down, and the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levi shall set it up, and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. So we see that mm, these people were not better people, or cleaner people, or more, more um, godly people, but they were... Um, anointed to this task, and God allowed them to live, though often, even in doing their duties, they would be breaking the Sabbath laws. It's very strange. Jesus makes a mention of that, that, that the priest is working, but you're not allowed to work. How can you work and not work? It's that idea that God's constantly working, and these people were specialized to protect the people, and represent the people, and um, offer sacrifices and feasts and festivals, all of this was together uh, in order to that God's worship would actually be involve us, though God wanted us, but we were not clean enough to be around him. And so the priests 
were very, very valuable, uh, and essential, totally essential, of course, representing Christ. We'll see it. Uh, Christ was not a Levite, could not minister in the sanctuary. We'll see that in the book of Hebrews. He is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. If you remember Melchizedek uh, uh, in the end of Genesis, uh, kind of comes out of nowhere, uh, and Abraham gives him the spoils of war. Uh, we're going to see that, that Christ is a type of priest like that. And the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man in his own camp, every man by his own sta standard throughout their host. So you're going to see that the uh, Ark of the Covenant is inside the square room, the small room inside the tent. There's a longer uh, outer room with more furniture outside uh, or, and, then, and then coverings. Then you're going to have two major pieces of furniture outside in the court, at the laver where the priests wash, and then the altar, which is for burnt sacrifices, all covered with a with a tent or sorry a like a fence of white linen cloth around the um, courtyard, and there's doors to get into it. So when you bring your offering, you would bring it to the door. The priest would then deal with that. Um, then around the tabernacle was a circle of tents where the priests lived, and the priests acted as a, as a hedge of protection to the people. Then north, south, east, and west, you had three tribes each. Three tribes north, three tribes east. We'll see that later as we see that further into numbers. Uh, so there, since it's circular, uh, you end up with little triangles, long, skinny triangles, which are kind of neighborhoods. And you'll see this is the neighborhood of Dan or or Simeon or whatever, and uh, those are around it. And the children of Israel did according to all the Lord commanded Moses. So did they. So um, I hope uh, you got a lot from this, and um, if you uh, missed any notes, just go back and rewind the tape. You can watch it as many times as you want. Um, let me pray with you, and then uh, and I'll see you tomorrow for uh, another chapter. Father, we uh, thank you for what you're doing in our lives and ask your blessings on us, that you would give us your grace, that you would open our mind to your word, that it would take deep root in our lives and mean, and mean great things to us, that we would repent of our sins and turn to our Savior fully uh, with all of our heart, um, that you have protected us from your holiness and from your wrath and you are sharing your life with us um, and that great grace can come to us because of our Savior. We thank you for that. We um, ask that uh, that though this world be a wilderness, that we would not be disobedient um, as the Israelites were, continuously disobedient. Um, but I thank you, Father, that we are not under a curse like they were, but that uh, Jesus bore the curse for us and that we are uh, beloved and forgiven and encouraged and blessed all of our days, we'll never know anything but grace forever and always. And we thank you for that. Uh, give us uh, protection and grace as we are apart from each other and help us to do our best in this new format uh, that's so weird to us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.